The 1952 Washington, D.C. UFO flap was a series of sightings of unidentified flying objects over Washington, D.C. that ran from the 12th to the 29th of July, 1952. The most dramatic events took place on the two consecutive weekends of the 19th and the 26th. These were not only ground and aerial visual sightings, there were radar reports. At 11.40 p.m. on Saturday, July 19, 1952, Edward Nugent, an air traffic controller for Washington National Airport, spotted seven objects on his radar scope. The objects were located 15 miles south-southwest of the city. There were no civil or military aircraft in the area, and these objects were not following any established flight path. A senior air traffic controller supervisor at the airport, Harry Barnes, watched the objects on Nugent's radar scope and later stated, We knew immediately that a very strange situation existed. Their movements were completely radical compared to those of ordinary aircraft. The unusual radar targets reappeared on the 27th of July. These sightings made for dramatic front page headline news, which led President Harry Truman to solicit an explanation that came from Captain Edward Ruppelt. Without conducting any interviews or any investigation, Ruppelt offered that temperature inversions cause radar signals to bend and give false returns. That explanation completely ignored the visual reports of the F-94 Starfire pilots who had been scrambled on the night of the 19th and 20th of July. Finally, to calm public anxiety, the U.S. Air Force Director of Intelligence, Major General John Samford, and the Air Force Director of Operations, Major General Roger Ramey, held a Pentagon press conference on July 29, 1952. What follows are the public statements made by General Sanford. I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. The Air Force interest in this problem has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. In pursuit of this obligation, since 1947, we have received and analyzed between one and 2,000 reports that have come to us from all kinds of sources. Of this great mass of reports, we have been able adequately to explain the great bulk of them, explain them to our own satisfaction. We've been able to explain them as uh, hoaxes as erroneously identified friendly aircraft, as meteorological or electronic phenomena, or as light aberrations. However, there have been a certain percentage of this volume of reports that have been made by credible observers of relatively incredible things. It is this group of observations that we now are attempting to resolve. Our basic difficulty in dealing with these is that there is no measurement of them that makes it possible for us to put them in any pattern that would be profitable for a deliberate, uh, custom sort of analysis to take the next step. We have, as of date, come to only one firm conclusion with respect to this remaining percentage, and that is that it does not contain any pattern of purpose or of consistency that we can relate with any, to any conceivable threat to the United States. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any department of the United States. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any agency of the United States. Major Keyhole, as author of the book Flying Saucers Are Real, what is your opinion of these new sightings of unidentified objects? With all due respect to the Air Force, I believe that some of them will prove to be of interplanetary origin. During a three-year investigation, I found that many pilots have described objects of substance and high speed. One case, pilots reported their plane was buffeted by an object which passed them at 500 miles an hour. 
Obviously, this was a solid object, and I believe it was from outer space. 